Hi everyone, um, we're back on part two, this retro studio. Um, just doing a little placement of some props here, and I opened up the blind, the curtains a little bit here to get this nice cast um, of light in. Um, I've been reading the comments, and yeah, I think I'll do some narration over if that helps. I, I know it's a bit boring just sitting watching um, someone work without much input there so yeah I'll try to tell you what I'm doing what I'm thinking about stuff like that um, over the on top of the time-lapse um, and um, I'll just read some uh, reply to some of the comments just one of the comments was why do I place a chrome ball when I was working on the floor um, it's 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 mainly I know this sounds silly but it's actually just mainly so I can rotate around the floor um, if I didn't have it and I was trying to rotate here, it gets a bit messy trying to rotate around the ball. I just need to see the floor at different angles. And if I can't see the floor at different angles, I can't assess what the reflections are doing and uh, what my maps are doing. Um, and so it's mainly for that. I just put a chrome ball in there because it helps, you know, just generally seeing what the, the light in the scene is doing. Um, yeah, so it's nothing like to check the lighting as much although having um different balls in the scene like flat gray and stuff like that does help um because you can see um what your lighting is doing um but i don't really use it i just want to see the images and like you know like you're photographing i'm just adjusting the lighting and stuff like that as i go and you know things change as you go you've got to have flexibility so i may change the lighting in the scene just see what happens but yeah mainly a chrome ball was just so i could rotate around a, a center point and see what the light was doing and also like sometimes i'll make an emissive ball it's my self-illumination texture and then i can also see what it's doing if i need to if it's a darker scene and i need it to emit uh, light to see how it's like reflecting off the, the wood. Um, I think the scene's rendering a bit slower. I've got a 3090 but like going through this translucent curtains is definitely slower than if I just had pure windows. So um, sorry if the renders are a bit noisy and um, I'm obviously also recording as I work here. I'm not sure if that's slowing things down. Um, what are the other comments? Johnny said uh, he uses Corona Wondering if it's worth switching to F-Storm, and, and yes, I am Australian. Um, well, F-Storm is just fantastic because it's extremely quick. Like, you just cannot believe. Like, I use it for my commercial work because renders that would take six hours in Corona take 30 minutes in F-Storm. Yes, there's no denoiser, but it's just so clean as it is. Like, you just cannot beat it. And there's a lot of stuff here that's happening in the tone mapping that makes it look more real out of the box. Like this, um, sorry, in the tone mapping here, these blur and sharpens, and there's just a lot of color and look control I find in this. And I use a, I always use the same light. You can change it up if you want to, but it's always there. And um, yeah, so I hope that helps. Um, what else have we got here? Yes, I'll narrate over the videos. Um, and if you have any other questions about what I'm doing, if I don't cover it and you want to know what I did, just feel free to like leave a comment. I'll try to answer in the next part. <clears throat> and um, so this part we're gonna just, I think we're gonna just do the windows and um, doors, things like that. And and then, then we can move on to the kitchen and then we'll start with the dressing and stuff like that. Um, Finally, we'll start setting up some shots. So uh, I'll slip, switch to time lapse now and we'll get going. And um, hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Okay, so here I'm just set at it, starting with the setup of the windows, um, divided into three bays. Uh, these will just be little mid framing. Just having a look at my reference. I'm gonna go for not an opening window, I'll just go for that sort of gridded pattern window. 
and I'm just trying to see from the main shot here how, how I want to divide it. I'd like them not to be too small. Yeah, I'm just working on the exterior frame here for it. I'm just using a sweep modifier with an existing profile. That'll give me um, something you want to do. I'm following the reference here, which is like the way they did um, warehouse windows, which is a metal frame, and then they would just putty in the actual glass. So a very cheap method to do it. And here, sweep modify being in a way where it doesn't have the pieces rotated the right way and you've got to reverse the splines so it's just not worth it just make it with a box here I'm setting up a spline to be the profile not the profile well the path for the putty um, now this stuff will be really far on the top, so I'm not going to be super accurate. I'm just going to, just if it's got the general look, which is fine. It's it's far enough that it's no problem. Um, I'm just going to set up a custom profile here, so it's got the right angle. Um, you want it that sort of pushed in putty look. Um, Sweet Modifier is just one of the best, that he just can't beat it. It's so quick for modeling, you know, it gives you a lot of flexibility, especially when you don't want to collapse things too often because you want to be able to change it if you need it. You know what I mean? You may set the profile the wrong size, you may need to adjust it. And if it's a profile with like a Sweet Modifier on it, you can go back, which is like the number one thing when you're doing architectural uh, modeling and stuff like that because clients will change their mind. So. I just work like that normally with my own projects as well. Um, here's me trying to put a chamfer in the corner, but it, again, it's probably not worth it. So I may give up on it. Oh, that's good. Now I'm just starting to set up the window material. Um, it's just a metal painted painted metal material from textures.com. Um, they've got fantastic materials. And um, it's just, I just need a bit of like wear on it. Um, it's, you know, like I said, it's very far away, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And um, here I'm just setting up the grid uh, to displace the glass. Um, probably won't actually displace it, we'll just do it with a, um, F-Storm has the bump with the parallax bump, which works great. Um, so I'm just creating the, the profile, the displacement profile here. And um, so it'll do the push and pull softening the edges things like that it's normal Photoshop stuff I've got a folder full of these sort of utility um, gradient maps of different kinds of um, things to make like corrugated or um, perforations it's super useful to have them just every time you make one save it in one local folder so you don't have to make it per project there we go later on I don't know if I cut it out but I do actually go back and turn it off on the back side um, that just helps it make it a bit of a cleaner look when it, um, the lights coming through it which is probably how it would really be made and here I think I'm just fussing with um, some dirt maps to try to just add an extra bit of detail I usually set them up with a red and a green there just to see what the bump the the map is actually doing um, you know just try to add a little bit of extra dirt on the edges there that'll help make it realistic this no, this is not advanced uh, stuff this is just very basic it'll be in the background it's not a hero material it's not gonna be very close so just something to give it a little bit more life on the edges um, just having a bit of wear on the edge of that metal and I'll put a little uh, color correction to make it a little bit lighter so it looks like it's worn. Um, now I think we're moving on to the putty which just sort of looks like rubber at this point.
Now I'm just setting up the putty material. I've got a terracotta as the diffuse. And I'm just trying to use that because it's got sort of like a modeled, um, exactly sort of like a putty would be. Um, just fussing with the material here, trying to do it's. It's got that white in the in the reference. It's still white, and um, there's not much contrast in the bump there. So I'm just seeing how much I need to push it up and down. Now I've got a window dirt material and I'm going to start to set up a bit of edge dirt on the edge of the windows. You know, obviously we don't want the seat to look too dirty, like it's like a renovated space, but um, it'll be nice to see if a little bit of extra on the edges. So just setting up my render there so I can see it, adding some randomization to the, the dirt. Then we're just going to mix it in and mix that with the glass and we'll run a um, distance texture in there. Uh, against, against the putty. Now you can see I'm just adjusting the, the edges. And added a little um, dirt map so it's not like a straight uh, fade off. And we may tweak it later when we see it in the scene, but I think later it just seems fine. Like it's not even a problem. Yeah, that putty is a bit extreme. Trying to add a bit more dirt on the edge of the putty there. Just checking it out, seeing how it looks. The problem I got now is like it's just white outside, so it's really hard to see the pattern. And um, you know what I mean? It's just sort of not how I want it to look. And um so it's just me trying to figure out how to, uh, I think I've got, I turned on the environment to be visible. That helps a little bit. You can see it a bit more there. We may have to go through a process here with still where we put a background. I'm not sure what we're going to do with the curtains out the left, what we're going to see. Um, I'm sort of researching what I want it to look like outside. And um, then we'll adjust, we'll make something probably custom because I was looking around for some buildings to put outside and I just sort of not what I like. Um, I was thinking something along like a um, German town, you know, very traditional looking buildings and a, um, something like that. Yep, three bays there, that looks good. I just put the same metal material on the cross, like the mid beams. Now I'm just making the window a bit deeper because I think that looks more correct for a warehouse that walls too, too shallow. I'm making tabs for my material editor here. Great to stay organized. I don't always name my materials, but it's good to have a, I usually set up like a scene tab where I have all my materials that are like applied to main things. And then I have an environments tab where I use it for like any lighting. And here I am actually just going into a little lighting adventure. I thought you may like to see this. So I'm just plugging in a nighttime um, HDRI for HDRI event. And I'm just rotating it, like with a toad mapping, seeing what you could get out of it. I like this, it's like quite a, I like how the glass is looking at the back there. Um, there's a street light out there. It's interesting, so. Now I'm gonna try, I think I'm gonna try sunset here. I'm still just rotating the night shot there. Here's the sunset, you can see like, there's lots of lighting we can do to rotate it. See what's going on in the scene, see what we can pull out of it. You know, you build a scene and then you wanna see what you can do with the scene with the lighting. You know, that's when the fun really starts. Like, let's rotate the HDRI, try different HDRIs. You know, don't just settle on where you're at. Like, you know what I mean? I do like the original lighting I have, but I may pull some images out with additional lighting. Maybe that nighttime scene. I'm back to the night here, and I like this little patch of light. Looks like it's coming through the front door. I like that. That's good. 
So try to remember that. I like this caster light on the um, the plaster mid wall there. I like that and the background windows. So just adjusting the tone mapping, seeing what it looks like. You know, if we have like a lamp in there, I think later in the thing I put a large Akari um, paper lantern over the dining table there. And now I'm going to start um, the skirts. It's nothing, it's just a normal process. Grab the bottom face and then you can pull the a spline off it. That's the easy way to get the exactly um, correct spline. Just using the sweet modifier and offsetting it with the pivot point there so it's accurate. Now I'm making a custom profile because Square is not going to do it for us. I'm going to have like that bigger, larger rounded edge. And um, you'll see I go on an adventure here in the wrong direction, which happens. You know, I'm just working it out as I go. Um, so this is, you know, just a very minimal um, skirt here. I'm trying to mix for the stylus apartment, like an older industrial building that's been like renovated over time. And so this is the latest iteration with a new kitchen very retro style um, the set dressing is going to be very like um, how do I put it S street urban very cool looking following that um, reference I found on Instagram really like that style but I need to blend it with the sort of retro -y kitchen so I'm just seeing how it goes see we'll play around with it and um, now I'm just making a painted painted wood skirting so it's just the same plast off the wall so I can get the same tone so it's not too different and then I'm plugging in just a wood oak texture and um, just separating them because they're split level and here I am thinking oh maybe I should unwrap them but um, more important than unwrapping is I want to chamfer the edges and like cut the pieces of board on the corners which is a classic Johannes trick that I learned to make it more realistic but I've got to cap this I've got to cap the custom piece so that we can split it and cap the ends so here we go I'm just gonna grab I'm grabbing the corners before I I'm and then I'm gonna split them cap them and then chamfer them and that's gonna make it look like different pieces of wood and these little things make a huge difference um, you know it's tiny shadow details but when you put them all together, that's when you um, it starts to look realistic. And here I am trying to thinking about unwrapping the whole um, the entire skirting boards, but I just quickly realized this is just pointless. It's going to be the only way you'll see the wood UV is if it's painted as a bump map. So it's just absolutely pointless. So I'm just going to switch to a, a box mapper here after I realize it's just a pain. UVing in 3D Studio Max is just a pain. I use um, Rhizome usually uh, for my commercial work, but if it's just something like this, you know, normal box map's fine. And I'm setting it up now, you know, I'll replicate this across the apartment. So, a little bit of time now, getting the look right, getting the how I'm going to make him right, just adjusting things here. Classic sphere there just to help me rotate. And I'm just adjusting the material so it's um, the same um, tone mapping as the wall. What I'm noticing is just it's very slow with the curtains on, so I was just hiding the curtains there. I'm just moving the skirts up there. They were a little bit too close to the floor. Sorry, you saw it there just for a second. It's like the final look. Now I just wanted to see how it looked like near the step. I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment here. There's a bit of a gap in the wood there. But 
just adjusting the skirts there. I'm just only worried about the kitchen area right now, and then we'll move down to the living area. So that's good. Just build the scene first before we start fitting it out. Here's me looking for a, a new lamp. I'm just ad adjusting the size of the uh, carry there, it's way too small. I want it like ridiculously large in this space. Let's do it up by eye, it doesn't have to be perfect. May have to adjust the height, I do adjust it later. It just will depend on the shot. And I'm offsetting the, the mounting in the ceiling. I want to hang it off this beam. And then like have a, a cord drooping. Just do that with a spline. This is just a 3D model from um, from 3D Sky, which is where I get most of my models. Just add them to your connector library that these things are ready to go. Really makes a difference building a library. There we go, it's good. May just, and now I'll just adjust the composition a bit, I think. I'm liking the lighting now. This streaming light coming in for the curtain break. I'll do the curtains last, I think, because it's going to be a bit of a fussy job. Just putting a light in the Akari. Nice little dim light. That was a Corona model originally. There we go. Nice. Just dim. Changing the fixture to white. That matches the scene better. Adjusting the thickness of the cord so it's not overly too thin. Otherwise it won't look realistic. And now I'm just going to build a little bracket to hold the lamp. normal box modeling nothing special it's going to be a small detail in the ceiling you basically won't see it we'll, we will add I think a few more like cord trays or, or something like that but it'll definitely need some down lights for the uh, uh, for the kitchen and I'd like to have some cables along the like concrete ceiling going to that you know just a bit more realism added in there so there we go just I brought in some um I've got some hardware saved in my library. Cannot stress how fantastic that is. You know, just having some pre-made bolts ready to go in your library and just dragging them in, it really adds a lot of things to the realism without a lot of work. You know, it's just a pack I downloaded on uh, 3D Sky. And um, I think that just wraps it up for this video. I know we didn't get to do the doors and hopefully I'm not going too slow, but I'm just going to place where I would work on it. Um, this is a little, um, new camera I set up, um, just like the Sakari lamp and this table setting looks really cool. I actually like this table a lot. Um, and so I think we'll continue on next time. I don't want to make these videos too long, so uh, I'm not sure what people would like to see, anything specific. Shout out to any comments you want, like just go for it and I'll, um, I'll try to answer them. I just realized yesterday that I'm not sure how I'm going to fit a hob in here, like a cooktop, but it may just be a two burner. I may have a smaller um, sink here. And then we'll probably should work on the doors. I want to, oh, we've got to set up the windows here above the um, 
sorry, I've got my camera very narrow, just my preference. I'm going to set up like a warehousey door to come in here, and then we'll set up the windows, and then we need to set up these two doors. Um, I'm not sure what else I was going to maybe start. I was thinking about cutting in a um, shelf into the back of these walls, but um, maybe at the back here. I just have to see what the living room looks at looks like when I get to it and um yeah so um hope you're enjoying these give me any comments tell me if I'm um hitting the stuff you want to see uh if this is any value um happy to keep going I'll probably try to finish this project so I'll try to record it the whole way through and um yeah um yeah we'll probably get to the kitchen soon after we do the doors it's not that big of a uh modeling job so and um, sorry about my um, <laughs> plug nose. I hope it's not too frustrating to li listen to. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.